Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. So with this episode, as I mentioned at the uh, end of the last one, I want to go ahead and focus on some inventory management topics. But before I jump on that, I actually think what I would like to do, I'm just going to take a second and uh, kind of get a new day started. And also in this episode, I want to talk about the weather mechanics, because obviously weather plays a very central kind of role in The Long Dark and reading the weather and, and whether you can read the weather and knowing what kinds of weather... Um, or how different kinds of weather affect you can um, be good to talk about in an early um, moment in the series. So I'm going to go ahead and, and focus on that as well. But let me also find a bed in this very dark room. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to rest and hopefully get through to the morning. Let's see, let's only sleep for about, uh, let's say, seven hours. You know what, let's even try six. Because a couple of times I feel like I've rested in this series and meant to get up at the crack of dawn and ended up getting up more like the equivalent of 10 or 11 o'clock, which is not the intention. Oh, hey, we've got an Aurora. I'll take it. I'm going to step outside at least and see how things look. This is new for me. I haven't been in these cabins since they added the Aurora based um, or the, the electronic stuff inside the electrical equipment so that, you know, you can see Aurora effects while indoors. It's pretty cool. So what was I looking for? I've been completely distracted by this. Oh yeah, that's right. I need to go ahead and drink some water because sleeping made me thirsty. I'm going to try and make my way back to the main base camp before we do our inventory management. But this gives me an opportunity to talk about auroras a little bit. So this actually does kind of count as a weather-based topic and it does also seem like it's fairly clear out on the ice. I have to remember that I am carrying some meat. So hang on, let's, let's check my calories. 1840. I can definitely eat. I'm going to eat my heaviest fish. Let's sort by weight. Let's just get rid of a little bit more food. There's some inventory management for you right there. Just again, always make sure you're eating your heaviest item first. So auroras, yes, are very pretty. And they're a great time to explore. All right, there are some wolves. And I feel like one of them is turning toward me right now. I feel like actually two of them are turning toward me. See, this is what I mean. If you can't see them, they're, they're both right there. They both turned around the same time and they're headed towards where I was. Uh, actually, no. Maybe those are just natural movements. But the point was that... The, the point is that they were they were moving towards where I was standing. So um, with Aurora, they're very nice and they're very pretty, and they can illuminate the sky at night. They can illuminate indoor environments at night, especially those that are replete with equipment of the electrical variety. But uh, unfortunately, they do also supercharge the wildlife a little bit. I mentioned in episode one that you can have Aurora-charged bears. You can have Aurora-charged wolves. They start glowing green. They get meaner. They get uh, more powerful. Well, they don't necessarily, I don't think, change their hunting behavior. So maybe they don't get meaner, um, but they definitely, uh, when you engage them in a fight, they will do more damage to you. They become stronger. So you do have to be careful. And thankfully, it seems like even though those two wolves are pretty close to me, see, they turn towards me again. I feel like they are trying to stalk me, but I got by them is the key point. So a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of feedback information about uh, about Aurora there. What what else about Auroras? Auroras are a newer addition to the game, so I want to make sure that I can cover what I need to cover. In, in certain places, Auroras can actually uh, make the environment more dangerous in that uh, if there are any electrical wires laying around, uh, if you stand on those spots, or if you get near those spots, you can actually get a new type of injury, which is a um, an electrical burn. You can, you can get a, a burn from... Uh, and they can do a ton of damage to you uh, if you find yourself in that situation. So you have to be quite careful if you're in those environments with the sparking wires. They are not simply props or they're not simply decorations when the wires start sparking. Stay the hell away. And I don't think most people would, would interpret it that way because they, I think the game kind of presents the, the wires as menacing and you can tell that they're they're spewing some uh, some harmful energy. But just be uh, be mindful of the ways that the environment can become simultaneously more breathtaking and uh, life-threatening in the same moment. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is going to be cool to walk back into the camp office and see the, the lights here as well. 
This is a treat, I'm sure, for those of you who have never seen the Aurora in this original Mystery Lake location, by the way. Because they did add a lot of stuff recently, and actually, I'm not even going to go inside yet, because I want to step up and see what the lights along the railway look like. This is perfect, too, because I was going to begin the episode talking about weather and then spend, like, maybe the last ten minutes talking about inventory management. I do need to put a few things down, though, so maybe we'll kind of split the, the episode back and forth between the two topics. Oh, this is so awesome. Look at this. This is what I want to see, though, is what it looks like out here. Oh, these are... Okay, these have a slightly different effect on the land than I thought they would. They're kind of spotlights as opposed to as opposed to uh, floodlights. I wonder what they look like farther out, though. I want to be able to just look down the tracks. I do want to watch for wolves, though, because I would hate for an Aurora wolf to sneak up on me right now. If you're wondering, yes, the... Okay, yeah, it's just, just a spotlight effect. That looks cool, though. Love it. If you're wondering, yes, the uh, Aurora always has that effect on wildlife. There's not a chance that a, uh, a particular animal will become supercharged by the Aurora. It will become supercharged by the Aurora. That's just a fact of life. All right, the sun is going to be coming up soon, and we can sleep for a little while longer. One thing I'm going to do, though, before I go anywhere... Because this is an inventory management piece that's worth knowing early on, and I had someone ask me about this. So, while we're outside, I'm going to stand right here. I'm standing over the snow. This could change in future versions of the Lawn Dark, but for now... Well, what I mean by this could change is, uh, what, what I'm about to do could... Um, these items could be more, more vulnerable to wildlife finding them in the future, but right now they're pretty impervious. If you want to keep your meat, whether it's raw or cooked, at a very high condition, you can actually leave it sitting in the snow and its condition drop will reduce dramatically. This is particularly true with items that need to be refrigerated in any way, and that typically applies to, you know, meat. So you can do that not only to save some weight, and not carry around that meat all the time, but also to keep the condition from dropping on your meat, whether it's cooked or not. Handy to know, right? Let's go ahead and sleep for three hours. That should fully recover our exhaustion, or close to fully, and also give us a brand new day. Very good. All right, so the Aurora is, of course, over. The Aurora can sometimes still be affecting you at, like, the beginning of a day, like at the dawn, but the moment it is fully daytime and no longer night, the Aurora will always go away. So, let's, uh, let's talk briefly about inventory management before I leave and uh, start talking more about the weather, because we're going to need to, frankly. I'm going to step back out here. See, condition is still 98%, whereas if you had put these in an inter interior container or put them down inside, their condition might have dropped a little bit more. And I may show you that later on in the episode. But for now, I think I will just eat one of them. Again, the heavier of the two. That's one of the foremost inventory management things that I do, is that when I sleep, I will... Um, or when I eat, I will have my food sorted by weight, and I'll make a decision on what I'm eating based on how many calories I need to have in me, and also the weight of the item. I will tend to go through my sodas pretty quickly, because sodas give me both, you know, calories, and they replenish thirst, but they also are half a pound each, so drinking them quickly will help reduce your burden uh, faster than usual. So, what else? I guess I do need to drink a little bit more, speaking of that. Let's go ahead and drink that soda. That'll top off our hunger, pretty much. Again, not necessary to keep these meters, you know, nearly full. One of the reasons that I am doing as much as I'm doing now is I'm trying to reduce what I'm carrying. So next order of business, again, when you are looking at your inventory, you can start by sorting everything by weight to see what's the heaviest. And we're carrying a ton of books. That's where most of the weight is. So sometimes the culprit really comes down to just one thing. And when it comes down to one thing, you really just have to ask yourself the very simple question of, well, how much of that one thing do I really need? Like, do I do I need to have that many books on me? And the answer, of course, is no. So I'm probably going to get rid of all but two. Books, again, are great fire starters, but they, are, they also, you know, weigh a lot. So that's the kind of thing that you can put down relatively quickly. But when it doesn't come down to one thing, you can actually sort everything 
you know, by you can go through the individual categories again and see which ones are really taking up a lot of weight. Another thing that I'm carrying that's really weighing me down is I have all these extra antiseptics in my uh, medicine category. And that is more of a situation of, do I have enough old man's beard, you know, to, to put this stuff down? And in this case, what I'm going to do, because I found that old man's beard not too far off, I'm actually going to put away all of this antiseptic. Because now that I know I've got not only some old man's beard on me to make an old man's beard wound dressing, but also I have a source of old man's beard where I can go get more when I need to, I'm not going to worry about that quite as much. Uh, I That's a very, very heavy item, the antiseptic, and just completely putting it away is something that I feel like um, would be a good thing to uh, to do in the long run, um, given that I know that I will have some uh, some naturally harvested items. That's the benefit of kind of knowing what those harvestable items do, because they can they provide serious benefits uh, in different ways over and above you know what you can find that's man made in the world. So I've also got a number of papers I mentioned in the previous episode that I need to work on these and make some tinder. But to tell you the truth. I'm also going to drop this stuff right by these books. This is something typically you would do in a... Yeah, see, I've got some additional books as well. Hang on. Sometimes there's different types and things don't stack quite the same way. But this is a good thing to do in like a central location because obviously I'm putting these items down. I'm not necessarily getting rid of them. And that's one thing you have to do when you're, you know, when you need to do some inventory management is make sure you go to a place where you don't necessarily have to get rid of the stuff that you are carrying. And I think that's fairly intuitive. I'm not saying something that I, I think people have to like spend a lot of time learning, but I just want to reinforce that instinct among new players. You you want to always try and make an effort to do this in a place where you can come back for the stuff later. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop actually all of this because I just don't I don't need it right now. I'll keep the two books. I've got these matches. I'll keep the Survive the Outdoors book on me as well. This is a fire starting guide, and we might do that later in this episode as well. Just read that and get it done. All right, now I also have some items here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put these trail boots down since I'm at a central location and a base that I know I will come back to. I'll put the boots up in an obvious location so that I don't forget about them before I leave. And then I'm going to harvest this uh, Warren Cotton toque, which we picked up, I think, in the last episode while I was going through fishing huts. I don't remember when we got that. I still need to repair some of my items all the way up to 100%, so I might do that as well before we leave. But another thing I'm carrying that's some extra weight is I have an extra bedroll, and that's really going to give me a lot of cloth. When you find that extra bedroll, you'll, you will almost always harvest it for the reason that you're seeing right now. Because it's just so much extra cloth, and it's amazing. All right, so obviously we've done a lot better for ourselves with our inventory just by looking at a few categories to see what we can fix. Let me go ahead and repair these uh, decent insulated boots. We may actually have to uh, spend this day repairing stuff. We'll see. So when repairing, it can be good to sort items by condition so that you have the lowest condition items first. Again, the only caveat there is that sometimes you'll want to repair not necessarily the item that's first in the sort. You'll want to repair something that's first in the sort and also on certain parts of your body. For instance, I'm going to go for these jeans first because I know that repairing the items that I'm wearing on my torso or my legs, those have the most effect the strongest effect on my condition improvement. I'll get to the stuff on my head a little bit later. Also, I need a drink. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, I will eat this tomato soup because tomato soup does actually replenish thirst a little bit now. I feel like a few patches ago, tomato soup did not do this. I feel like for a while it was just a calorie benefit. But hey, I can't complain. It's good that I can do that. So water is one of the things that will weigh you down the most. So just knowing how much even just half a half of gal half a gallon or a half a liter of, of water um, weighs is is really, really useful. And I'm almost done with my sewing kit. Again, I can use fishing tackle to repair stuff as well. So I'm not completely out of luck, but that's a good thing to be aware of. Let me go ahead and repair these toques. So the sewing kit might get ruined after this one. It's gone. We'll talk about what to do with ruined items in a second, but we still have the sewing kit or the uh, fishing tackle. And by the way, last episode when I when my fishing was stopped short unexpectedly, I had one of my very regular commenters point out to me that yes, indeed, it, that happened while I was talking and I didn't hear it. My fishing tackle did break, which of course can happen anytime. 
So you might be wondering to yourself, well, what happens when you've run out of hooks and, and line? You know, what do you do? The workbench crafting, which we haven't gotten to quite yet, but we will in the next episode or two, um, is a completely different category, of course, from the crafting that you have in the on-the-fly menu that we've already looked at. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Just want to finish repairing all this stuff. We're going to be in much better condition when we go back out. Another thing I need is I need a proper jacket. R right now, okay, that's the last of my cloth. I can get more, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it for now. Uh, right now I have two shells on, which is good for wind protection, but not good for warmth protection. If I find a proper jacket, I'll be much warmer than I am right now. And also I have an additional underwear layer that I haven't taken advantage of. I could find, I could find a, a second pair of uh, wool socks or climbing socks that would be better for one or both of these slots. So still lots of room for improvement in the clothing category. But let's go ahead and do a little bit more. I'm going to drink one of these cups of herbal tea to replenish both categories there. So anyway, as I was saying, good yawn, Mark. This is our field crafting, but when you go to our, what when you uh, what you actually need a workbench for, notice you can craft a hook from one piece of scrap metal. You get three hooks, actually, from one piece of scrap metal, and two lines from one cured gut. What's a cured gut, you might be asking? Well, that involves hunting, and hunting we'll be doing very soon, but we're still in a mode where we're scavenging a little bit. Especially when you're playing the long dark, you will never, unless you find the rifle and are determined to hunt right away, you might be doing some fishing early on, but you will almost never be hunting within your first hour of gameplay. You'll be scavenging. You'll be seeing what you can find from the natural environment, getting your initial clothing, etc. So it's natural that we haven't done an episode on hunting just yet, even though it seems like that's a pretty central concept. Plus, we don't have a weapon. So, you know, there is some stuff that we can do with stones that uh, we're going to talk about that can be good for, uh, good for hunting as well, good for getting food. And we'll probably do that in the next episode or two. But for now, let's see. I mean, it's not completely dark outside yet, and I kind of want to keep looking around. So let's do that. I feel like the weather is being decent, and I can talk about the... Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, weather in the lawn dark. Blizzards, different types of wind. They've added a lot more variety to the weather since the game was initially released. They've added different kinds of storms, like there can be strong winds that kick up, but that aren't necessarily blizzards, but they sound like blizzards. You'll know a blizzard when you see one because there's very limited visibility, the wind is howling, and it's incredibly cold. But there can sometimes be what feel like near blizzards now in the Lawn Dark. If you are an, a veteran player returning to the game and you're not aware of that, there's definitely more variation in the weather. The most important thing that I can tell you now about weather patterns is that they differ per zone, and they are memorizable. So the way that weather develops in one zone, like in Mystery Lake, for instance, is different from the way that develops in any other zone, whether it's Timberwolf Mountain, Coastal Highway. Blizzard frequencies are different. Pleasant Valley, for instance, has a very high blizzard frequency, and I love it. I, I, I really love every single moment of it. I, I, the, the amount of blizzards that... that Pleasant Valley throws at you is I got to say it's just perfect. I have never once felt the need to complain about it or that that it's that it's particularly um, uh, Exaggerated over and above the blizzard frequency in other zones Pleasant Valley. Mm, great stuff blizzards um, <laughs> No sarcasm there whatsoever uh, but in terms of you know, just memorizing the different weather patterns um, again I'm, It's not something that I'm going to explain explicitly in, in terms of like well, here's what Here's how one particular type of weather, whether it's fog or a slight breeze or the beginning of snow, will lead to a new type of weather in each zone, because I think you should discover that for yourself. But it is important to know that, number one, they do vary by zone, and that you can memorize the patterns and kind of be able to predict what's about to happen if you pay attention. So just know that. And then as far as how each type of weather affects you, obviously right now it's windy, and snowy. So anytime you've got a, a good combination of, um, anytime you have a lot of snow on the air, even when it's not windy, you will get, your, your clothing will start to get wet slowly. If it's very windy, obviously all that snow is being blown onto your clothes and you'll get wet faster. So that can, that, that effect can compound itself. And of course you'll have more of a wind chill as well, because you always have air temperature and wind chill affecting you at any given time. Right now it feels like 36 degrees, so believe it or not, we are, when you look at our warmth meter down there on the bottom left, we're not dropping. Oh, nice. There's a second pry bar. 
Another emergency stem, too. That's three emergency stems I have on me now. That's good. Let's grab these rose hips. Alright, so it actually seems like the weather's calming down a bit, which is nice. I do want to say that I don't mean to suggest that the weather always follows the exact same pattern. Right now, I mean, honestly, what you were seeing could have transitioned to a blizzard. But, in general, there are patterns that are regular enough in each zone for you to detect. That is a deliberate change that they made to the weather several patches ago. So, be aware of that. So, anyway, yes, snow and wind affects... You know, you, you can kind of tell when, when the weather's getting worse in that sense, and you also have uh, your, your clothing's wetness and whether your clothes are freezing to worry about. And, as, and beyond that, we've seen the auroras. Obviously, since the seasons haven't been added to the game yet, there, there have been discussions about um, more seasons and seasonal transitions being added to the Lawn Dark, so rain is currently not a factor. There's only snow and different intensities of snow. Sometimes, if you go out in the middle of the night, it can be very still. And even though there's no blizzard, it can be incredibly cold because you have, you know, kind of that cold front mentality where, you know, whenever you have, whenever you have a cold front moving through an area, the atmosphere is very, very thin. And so it's actually very still. You don't necessarily have, it's a bit, if it's a big cold front, um, you know, it's very widespread over an area, you won't have as much wind because there's not an area of transition between hot and cold. And so things are just calm and still and cold. And that effect will be replicated in the long dark with just very, very still, clear, cold nights in the same way you would expect in the real world. So that's one thing to look for. But that's really just a matter of keeping an eye on temperature, not, ne not necessarily weather-related. So as far as uh, just weather-related topics, let's grab these stones since they're right in front of me. That's all I can think about on the top of my head. But again, check off the top of my head. But again, check the comments when you're done watching this episode and see if there's any additional feedback that we've had whether it's suggestions from a player or just comments that I've tacked on. Because there have definitely been some good things so far, as I've mentioned. Strongly encourage you to continue to check. Hey, I see a bear. Bears have slightly different behavior from wolves in that you can aggro a bear without necessarily really pissing it off. You can draw a bear's attention. Oh! <gasps> Uh, okay, um, never happened before, this is, this is new, uh, this, okay, the survival school just got put on pause for a second, I've, I've never, uh, that's a moose, that's a moose, you guys. I don't know what happens here, do, are they peaceful unless you piss them off? Do I have to worry about getting broken ribs right now? This would be a good teaching moment for all of us, but holy crap, sorry, I'm really excited. If, you, if you're watching this series and you're completely new to my channel, this is probably the most excited you've ever heard me. But that is definitely a moose. Of course, I don't have a means of killing it right now, so we're just going to stare at its majesty and be happy. But that is definitely a moose. Alright, I'm pretty close to it. Oh, alright, he's coming. Let's get in here. Alright, so that was... He took on a threatening pose. Interesting. Okay, so his behavior seems to be... Oh, his running animation is... A little bit fast compared to his movement speed on the ground right now. I'm sure they'll tweak that. That's funny. But. Cool. Alright, so that seems, it seems like what happened there, and this is just a hunch. It seems like what happened there is that he, that they'll threaten you if you get close. There's a crow feather because there's crows circling this corpse. They'll threaten you if you get close, but to, okay, he's still there. But they won't necessarily charge you unless you continue to get close. All right, let's get this for firewood. And let me talk about this really quickly before I head inside uh, to, to this iconic little location we found right here. Um, deer carcasses. There are two different types of carcasses that you can find in the world when it comes to deer carcasses. They're the ones that are actually kills, whether a wolf has killed one in the live game world or you've killed one in the live game world or a bear's killed one. But there's also the prop carcasses. These are permanent. They never go away. And when you find them, Actually, we're pretty warm right now, so I think I can I can get away with this right now. When you find them, I've got a hunting knife, so... Well, that's... The, hmm. Do I want to skin this thing right now? It'll take an hour and 11 minutes. It's 100% frozen. 
This is worth having a bit of a discussion about before we leave. When you find them, they'll only have a little bit of meat on them because they're prop carcasses. The, the, the game kind of gives them to you to have some initial hides and guts that you can use for some deerskin items, which we're going to start working on right now because we found this and I've been waiting for this. But uh, also, you do have to be mindful of the fact that when you're harvesting these corpses, the tool you use matters. The only tool I have right now is a hunting knife. But this is a 100% frozen carcass, which means the meat actually takes longer to harvest. As a matter of fact, because I've got so much food on me, I'm going to hold off on harvesting the meat. I'll come back for this because I know it's not going anywhere. I want the hide and the guts for now. We're going to harvest this. I'm going to keep a very close eye on my coldness meter. It looks like we're okay. Now again, because I have the hide and guts on me, I might attract the attention of that bear. The moose is still over by the cabin, which is not good, really. I'm going to try and step around him. Seems like we've got a little bit of a fog, but a little bit of moonlight as well. Very nice. It's so cool that we've encountered a moose for the first time in survival school. I, this is... That was not an exaggerated reaction. I've never seen a moose before in the lawn dark. That was my genuine excitement of not only knowing that I was seeing it, but seeing it with you guys for the first time. That's so, so exciting. Yes, I know. For those of you who are more cynical and realistic and just, just grounded people, I get to see it, and then you guys saw it second. But the point is, once this episode's live, it's a shared experience. There's some rabbits. We can definitely do things with these stones, but we'll do them in the next episode. All right, we've arrived at the Trapper's Homestead. There's one thing that I hope, in particular, I find here. All right, I'm going to get low because I just don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to make this uh, wolf angry. Okay, we are in Trapper's Cabin. I'm going to light one match because I want to see right now. <laughs> hey, guys. We get to go for a moose hunt next episode and hunt in general. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 6. No. Yeah. No, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Long Dark is normally 6. Threw me off. 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.